Hey everyone and welcome back to another episode of Tacky Tuesday. If this is your first time passing by the channel, hi, I'm Stacy. I'm a nationally registered paramedic and I created this series called Tacky Tuesday because whenever I was a paramedic student, I definitely struggled with cardiology. So these are short EMS cardiology lessons and I try to keep them under five minutes. Today we're gonna to be talking all about idioventricular rhythms. So let's talk about what an idioventricular rhythm actually is. In a nutshell, an idioventricular rhythm is an abnormally slow rhythm that originates from the bottom chambers of the heart, aka the ventricles. It occurs when the SA node and the AV node fail to fire, so all the impulses are coming from the ventricles. Some of the characteristics of an idioventricular rhythm on a 12 lead or an EKG are the rate of 20 to 40 beats per minute. Now depending on the literature you read, you may see 15 to 40 or 20 20 to 50, but typically your idioventricular rhythm is going to range between 20 to 40 beats per minute. It is regular, there is no P wave, and because of that there's no PR interval, and the QRS complexes are abnormally wide. And why is that? That is because it is coming from the biggest part of the heart, and the ventricles require more force in their contractions. Some of the causes and risk factors of an idioventricular rhythm can include the reperfusion of an acute MI, hypoxemia, electric electrolyte imbalances, heart disease, and this can be a congenital heart disease. It could be cardiomyopathy or something like that. Myocardial ischemia. So if you're working a cardiac arrest and you achieve ROS, then you could see an idioventricular rhythm. The signs and symptoms of an idioventricular rhythm can include chest discomfort, dizziness, syncope, shortness of breath. The patient may be cyanotic. There may be edema nausea, vomiting, pale skin, and diaphoresis. I did include edema mainly because some of the conditions that can lead to an idioventricular rhythm, like cardiomyopathy, heart disease, congenital heart defects, things of that nature, can have their own symptoms that may be associated with them and cause the idioventricular rhythm, if that makes sense. So quickly taking a look at this, you can see they're very wide. It's a slow rhythm. That's one example of an idioventricular rhythm. And the second example we have is this one, also wide, also very slow. This could be from a ROSC patient, I'm not sure. This is also an example of an idioventricular rhythm, very wide, very slow. So now that we know what causes it, what it looks like, the signs and symptoms, Let's talk about possible 911 EMS setting treatments for these patients. Obviously, get your 12 lead, get your vitals, oxygen if needed, if they're satting low, IV access, blood draw. If they are symptomatic, obviously you can go down your symptomatic bradycardia algorithm, atropine, transcutaneous pacing if indicated, epinephrine or dopamine if you are gonna go down that route and treat your patient's complaint. What are they complaining of? If you have a living, breathing, talking patient in front of you, definitely talk to them, engage how they they're feeling. And always report and transmit your findings to the hospital. And I put at the bottom to get a great medical history. You want to know if anything like this has ever happened before. One of the causes of idioventricular rhythms, I don't know if I included it, but it is drug toxicity. So it could be digoxin toxicity or something like that. So you want to ask what kind of medications they've taken because that could have led to the rhythm as well. Anyway, guys, that's about all I have for idioventricular rhythms. I hope you guys learned something and I hope you have a great day. I will see you next Tuesday. Bye.